and we are honored to have him on our show tonight. He joins us now. Bobby, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so you are, of course, being dismissed as a vaccine nut, but watching your announcement today, it wasn't about pharma even so much as it was about America's place in the world and what do we do about it. If you wouldn't mind summarizing for our viewers where you think we are and what you think we ought to do. Well, I gave a long speech, Tucker, and thank you again for uh, having me on. Of course. And for that very kind of an introduction. Um, you know, they, I think that the general theme of my speech was this corrupt merger of state and corporate power, which has, uh, which has gotten, uh, which is turning our country into a corporate kleptocracy, into a system of socialism for the rich and this kind of a cushy socialism for the rich and this kind of brutal, um, merciless capitalism for the poor. Uh, it keeps us in a state of war. It bails out banks at the same time that it, it, you know, this month, last month, the United States government told 30 million people it was cutting their welfare, their food stamp checks by 90%. It took, it took 15 million people off of Medicare. The same month it gave $300 million to the Silicon Valley Bank and tapped up the cost of the Ukraine war to 113 billion. We're sending 113 billion to the Ukraine. The entire budget of EPA is 12 billion. The budget of CDC is 11 billion. We have 57% of American citizens could not put their hands on $1,000 if they have an emergency. A quarter of our citizens are hungry. So we're cutting welfare and food stamps by 90%. And we're paying, and we're bailing out the bankers. We're paying for a war that you know we you know, we can't afford. And um, and the, the way that we do this is by printing money. We've printed ten centuries of money in the last fourteen years, and that is that caused the inflation, which raises food, by which is a, which is a tax on the poor. So, you know, we've raised food prices for basic foods like chicken, dairy, and milk by 76% in the last two years. And now we're cutting people's food stamps and bailing out banks the same month. It, uh, it doesn't make any sense. And we need to get rid of this kind of corporate control of our government. It comes from uh, this, you know, this, it, it, our, our democracy is devolving into kind of a corporate plutocracy. I, I would think that what you just said, and, I, and I'll just be honest, I agree with most of it, um, but even if I didn't, I would think, boy, that's a really interesting thing to say. You have a coherent worldview. You've written a lot of books on these topics. You've clearly thought about it. You're not in it for the money. So don't these issues deserve a wide hearing uh, before the public entering a presidential year? It seems to me that they do. I would think they would, and particularly the issues of war. And, you know, my son went over and fought in the Ukraine, as I said today. I think we're, you know, people, the, the major doyens, sort of diplomatic, the most respected diplomatic gurus like Henry Kissinger and Jack Matlock and Larry Wilkinson have all said the Ukraine war is a huge problem for our country because it, from a geopolitical standpoint, it's driving the Russians close to the Chinese, which is the worst thing for us. But we're there for the right reasons, because we have tremendous compassion for the Ukrainian people and the illegal invasion, the brutality, and also their valor and their courage. My own son was serving over there. He joined a special forces unit as a machine gunner. He fought in the Kharkiv offensive. Americans care about the underdog. They care about that kind of suffering. But the question is, why are we in the Ukraine? Because Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, said that we're there to exhaust the Russians. President Biden has said that we're there to, de to, to deplatform, to depose Vladimir Putin. And if that's why we're there, and we're killing a lot of Ukrainians as pawns in a proxy war between, between two great powers. Here's one last thing I would say. Nobody talks about this. There's 14,000 Ukrainian civilians who have died, but 300,000 troops. The Russians are killing Ukrainians at a 7 to 1 to 8 to 1 ratio. They cannot sustain this. What we're being told about this war is just not true. No, it's not true. 
And I would hope, despite the fact you criticize their advertisers, other media outlets would have enough respect for our country and for its voters to give what you said a hearing, because I think it's really important. And we're, again, grateful that you came on our show tonight. You're always welcome. Bobby Kennedy, Jr., thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.